I used to be scared of cemeteries. When you watch scary movies, nothing good usually happens in a cemetery, especially at night. But a cemetery is so much more than a scene for a horror movie. Have you ever walked through a cemetery? It's a powerful experience. It's the same with spending time in the columbarium at Bethlehem. Have you ever just stood in silence in the columbarium? There are so many stories in each of the headstones and nameplates. Stories that may be lost to history. Stories that remain alive in descendants. Stories that have been recorded. Each story is meaningful because every person in this world has changed the world no matter how long or short their time on earth was. On All Saints Day, we remember all the saints in our lives who have gone before us, those who rest in the arms of God, part of the church triumphant. Death is hard for many people. Just recently, I saw a Facebook post on one of the literature groups that I'm a part of, and someone talked about death in a post that they made. And another person commented, saying, can this please have a trigger warning? I'm triggered by death. And it made me pause and think, how many people are triggered by death? How many are so uncomfortable around the idea of death that they don't want to talk about it or acknowledge it at all? Maybe they're in a place where death is so fresh and raw in their minds that reading about it, hearing about it, brings this whole tidal wave of emotions that brings them to their knees and they just can't deal with it at that moment in time. There's a whole lot of death in our world. Through war, famine, natural disasters, accidents, malicious actions, cancer, other health issues, old age, and sometimes the weight of the sadness of it all is so heavy to bear that it starts to crush us. And grief, whether it be grief because of death, anticipation of death, a changed life, or any sort of loss, grief is heavy. Grief is deep sorrow, a normal and natural emotional reaction to loss or change. Grief is like the feeling of reaching out for someone who's always been there only to discover when we need him or her one more time, they're no longer there. And no matter how hard society tries to act and pretend that sad feelings don't exist, they do. Grief is a part of life because loss is a part of life. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. In our gospel text for today, Jesus teaches his disciples something called the Beatitudes, which comes from the Latin word beatitudo, meaning blessed. Now the Beatitudes are not a checklist of things that we must be or do in order to earn salvation. They are not telling us that we must suffer and be miserable in order to be recipients of God's grace and mercy. They do not say those who suffer the most are the most blessed. Instead, they're statements of grace. They're reminders to us in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of mourning, and the crushing weight of grief and sadness and change, that there's hope, promise, and a future, even if it's just a faint glimmer. Maybe we can't recognize those moments when we're in the thick of grief, but looking back after the fog clears, we can better see and remember the things that were said or not said the actions, the gestures, the ways light shined in the darkness.
something far scarier than facing death and loss is ignoring it, numbing it, pretending that it's not there and thinking that if we don't acknowledge it, if we don't acknowledge our feelings, it'll just go away. We do those things by fearing the word death. When in fact, fear of the name just increases fear of the thing itself. We do these by ignoring what we're feeling, by numbing the pain that we feel, thinking that it will go away. And in fact, numbing the pain for a while will make it worse when you finally do feel it. Grief doesn't just disappear. Now, there's an example that I've used before. It's Grief is like a ball in a box with a pain button. So grief is the ball. And at first, the ball of grief is so large that no matter where it goes in the box, it hits that pain button. Over time though, the ball grows smaller. The box grows larger. And the ball doesn't hit the pain button as much. The grief never goes away. That ball never goes away. Because a wave of grief can hit us out of nowhere. It's when it hits that pain button because the pain button doesn't go away. So after my sister-in-law died, I had a moment where I was shopping at Target when I was buying a new hairbrush. So my sister-in-law was a cosmetologist and she had bought me my last hairbrush. And I used that thing until it was hurting my head. And then I needed to go and buy a new one. And I didn't want to. Now I imagine that anyone who was around me seeing me cry over a hairbrush thought that I was losing it. But grief isn't always rational. And this is where our village around us is so important. So my husband, he looked at me as I was crying over this brush and he just said, what would she say if she was standing here? And my response was, she would tell me to quit being stupid and ruining my hair with a broken brush. And then I could smile and remember the good moments. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. A line that I often use during funerals is, grief is the price we pay for love. And it is a price that is worth paying over and over again, because it means that we loved deep enough to experience the grief of loss. And we know that love comes from God. As John writes in 1 John chapter 4, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. We love because God first loved us. There's nothing wrong with grief because grief comes out of love. To deny grief is to deny love and to deny love is to deny God. Instead of numbing or ignoring grief or fearing death, instead let us embrace love. Let us allow ourselves to see blessings in the midst of grief. To remember the promises that Jesus gives us, that nothing can separate us from God's love. And rejoice and be glad that there is a reward that awaits us in heaven. And that's paradise forever, resting in the arms of Jesus, living into the grace promised us in the Beatitudes into the grace promised to us by God. Amen. A couple of reflection questions for you to go deeper into the message. The first, think to a time when you were in the midst of grief. Was there a point where you felt blessed or you felt peace? How did that help you in the moment? And the second, what are ways to show your support to someone who's grieving without using words? <laughs>